how can we create an inclusive educational environment? Well, first piece that we have to acknowledge is inclusion is a verb. Okay, now you look it up, it's gonna say a noun, but I argue with that. That's different. Being included into a space, uh, feeling as you are part of a group, a community. The way that we can do that for our students is by actions, not just putting on a piece of paper saying that, oh, we believe in all kids and, and oh, you know, this is our structure. No. How do we make sure that they can see this as well? And it's not just words, but our actions are there also. That's why I say inclusion is a verb. Okay, I'm gonna give you some strategies. The first one, pretty simple. You know what? I almost feel like I shouldn't even have to say this. All right, if you're watching this, you know, one could argue, you know, maybe I'm preaching to the choir in this standpoint, all right? But moving away from traditional curriculum and assessment practices, if your school is not already pushing, okay, cultural responsiveness, I mean, at, at, in 2024, if that's not a conversation, taking a stance or not taking a stance is taking a stance. Project-based learning, universal design for learning, okay? These are just some of the asset-based approaches that we need to be encouraging our staff, our teachers to be doing. Because when we're being culturally responsive, those are inclusive practices when it comes to feeling accepted, supported, and included. Project-based learning, again, having your students collaborate with each other, learning from different areas. This might mean that you need to do a curriculum audit if you have not done so already. Think about, okay, are individuals represented? Does my students, can my students see themselves within the curriculum in positive, <laughs> I have to add that, can they see themselves in positive ways? Not just slavery, conquistadors, civil rights, genocide, colonization. But can they see themselves in positive ways and not just once a month or once or one month out the school year or a special holiday? All right, so look at your curriculum. Does it promote cultural competence? And, and, and the different experiences that students can relate to. And that's why I say you need to be talking about cultural responsiveness. You need to be talking about project based. You need to be talking about universal design for learning. Universal design for learning is a piece that I see a lot of schools neglect. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, if you look into that, if you provide that professional development, the universal design for learning, it is a game changer, game changer. And I got several episodes, by the way on that All right the next one is address discrimination your students want to see again going beyond just words but they want to see the action there if you do not already have an, an anti-discrimination initiative please do so I, I i tell folks you need to have a racial equity policy you need to have some sort of uh, yeah, it's one thing to have an anti-bullying policy, but it's not the same when it comes to discrimination and racism. You call me stupid? Yeah, I hurt. You know, I hurt my feelings. Been on how you know sticks and stones, maybe. But you call me a racial slur, that'll mess my day up. It's not the same. Your students need to see that your parents need to see that there is a clear distinction between your, your 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 teasing, if you will, your bullying, if you will, and flat out hate. There needs to be policies there. If you do not have that already, that is a conversation I'd love for you to lead. Again, you are showing your community, your staff, I'm sorry, you're showing your students and their families, look, your identity matters to me. Your uniqueness matters to me. And I lead a school, I lead a district, and we will not tolerate discrimination, hate speech, racism, homophobia, whatever it might be. We will not tolerate it at our school. The last one is establish support systems. Avoid staff working in silos. Okay, you got your... You got your special ed department. You got your 
your uh, behavior pr- department, you, you got your school counselors, you got your multilingual learners department. They have all these different tiers and they no one ever talks to each other. And what happens? You end up getting a question that staff will ask each other. Hey, is this one of your students? You know, is, is, is this student in special ed? Is this one of yours? Or is it one of mine? I've, I've literally heard teachers ask those kind of questions. No, they're one of ours. They're part of the school. They're students. Right? A lot of our kids, they may be multilingual learners. They might also be in special education. And if we're not talking to each other, we're going to create challenges. Okay, again, action. The action has to be there. Create those teams where your your multilingual learners staffing, your your special education staffing, your behavioral intervention staffing, they collectively address the diverse needs of your students. They need to be meeting regularly. If you can, I always encourage to invite parents and guardians for some workshops, meetings, and things that they can do so you can partner with them at home as well. And any other co-teaching opportunities that you can provide is also, also encouraged.